number four symbolizes building a strong foundation. I'm afraid we need to use math. BC students, it's time to step up your game and try lesson four dash five. Ho 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 ho. I've been practicing my Santa laugh because I'm supposed to be Santa Claus at the Christmas party this year. So I've been trying to work on the Santa laugh and make it authentic, you know? So excuse me for that. Now, you want to give your calculus teacher a heart attack? Integrate x times cosine of x and say, well, x integrates to be x squared over 2. I know that. And the integration of cosine is sine. So I'll just do the integration of each one, sandwich them together, make an integration sandwich, and then put a plus C at the end. Oh, gosh, you're giving me a heart attack. I can't take this. I see students do this all the time, though. If that's x plus or x minus cosine of x, they're two separate terms, and yes, you could do this. But multiplication? You think you can just integrate, integrate, and just stick them together? No, 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 absolutely not. This is multiplication. We have talked about the product rule when you take a derivative. Remember ho hi plus hi ho Well, there's no exact reverse product rule. That's why you can't just jump into integration. You have a variable times a variable. No, no, no. Unless it's either u substitution from a past lesson in chapter three, or the thing we do today, which is the closest thing we have to a reverse product or reverse quotient rule. And it's very cool, I love it. Check out this board over here. Now this is going to be a little bit like u substitution, actually a lot like u substitution, except today we have the variables u and v. So now we're stepping up our game. It's kind of a U substitution, V substitution, kind of both. All right, so these are more complex, so we need more variables. Suppose that F of X equals U times V. Okay, are these constants or variables? We just talked about it. So in the blank on your notes, we would put variables. So anytime you see U or V in any calculus class, that's considered to be a variable. It's just like X, right? It's like X and Y. All right, let's do the product rule, and then I want to show you how they discovered the reverse of what is roughly the product rule. So, if f of x is variable times variable, how would you take the derivative? How would you find f prime of x, or we could even call it uv quantity prime? Wouldn't you take the second one, leave it the same, v, times the derivative of the first, the derivative of u, you could write u prime, or you could just write du for derivative of u. We'll do that today. Plus, the first term stays the same, u, times the derivative of the second. The derivative of v is, we'll call it dv today. That was done by the what? By the product rule, of course. All right, so far so good. Now, what did mathematicians do to crack the case here? All right, how did I get from this step here to this little expression over here? You see the uv quantity prime is still there, right? We're doing the product rule of uv. Where'd this v du come from and its subtraction? Oh, it was here, so I just subtracted it from both sides. What's left over? u times dv. All right, so we're still on the product rule. We're just kind of twisting it in a different way. All right, now we're going to go backwards. What if you integrate all this stuff on the left-hand side? That's what I'm doing here. If you integrate the left side, wouldn't you have to integrate the right side? So let me integrate u dv. If you integrate one side, you integrate the other side, right? Okay, and finally, we get to a new formula that, by the way, BC students love this formula. They never forget it. They find it very easy, and they actually kind of enjoy these problems in 4-5. So you're going to enjoy this. So let's see. The integral of u dv is here, but I moved it over here. So this part's going to go over here, but we're actually going to integrate it. What is the integration of uv prime? Wait a minute. What's the integration of the derivative? Wouldn't those kind of offset each other? Didn't we do this once before? 
Didn't we say the integration of f prime of x is just f of x? That's called the fundamental theorem of calculus. I mentioned it before, all right? So this is, let's make a note here. By the FTC is what we call it for short. Calculus teachers just call it the FTC. But it's the fundamental theorem of calculus, all right? It sounds so powerful. By the fundamental theorem of calculus. Like I'm some kind of, you know, superhero or something, right? So, by the fundamental theorem of calculus, the integration of the derivative shall simply be uv, because the integral and derivative offset each other, right? Does that make sense? Minus, and then we don't know what v and du are. Let's just put the integral on it or distribute the integral to it, all right? Now, this is not going to feel very familiar yet, but didn't we just do the product rule, and then didn't we just integrate and go backwards? So apparently, this formula works. The integration of u dv, which is what our goal is today, to try to get a u and a dv, the integration is uv minus integral v du. Okay? Has a nice ring to it. You will see how it applies. For now, just trust it. But do you agree with each step? If you agree with each step, then you agree that this is a valid formula, and it's kind of the product rule backwards. Okay, now, Mr. Wade, show me how to use it, right? But first, you know, I love to talk about history, right? I wonder who discovered it and when this was discovered. All right, so you know what? Why don't we just come up with a name? Since we do history all the time in class, let's just make up a name for it. Um, let's call it, okay, uh, this is really on the fly right now. Okay, I've got an idea. All right. And now it's time for a new feature called History Break. This is history in the making. And history will define us. integration by parts, and it was discovered almost 50 years after the original integration was discovered by Sir Isaac Newton. It was discovered in the year 1715, which was 13 years after partial fractions from 4-3 and 4-4, and it was discovered by number 135 ranked Brooke Taylor, who was only 30 years old at the time. Now, Brooke Taylor actually served on the committee of Newton versus Leibniz in the court case of who discovered calculus first, and they were both crowned co-founders, of course. Now, Brooke Taylor was born 20 years after integration was even discovered. Sadly, Brooke Taylor was dead by 46, but he made his mark, and he will make his mark later when we do chapter 12 in BC. So let's talk strategy in example A. And yes, I did change shirts. All right, fine. I'm filming this on two different days, all right? I'm a busy man. Okay, so example A. Now, how do you know that we're supposed to use our newfound rule? Well, do you see that you have an X group times an X group of variable times a variable? That should remind you of the product rule. There's no exactly reverse product rule, but this is pretty close to it, all right? So let's give it a try. So Wait, how do we even use that formula? So I showed you the formula over there, right? And you see that we have the integration of u dv. So that's kind of the key right there. One term's gonna be u, like the old u substitution, but then one term's gonna be dv. What does that mean? Well, let's try both options and see if we can sort this stuff out, all right? Okay, so option number one. We could let u be two plus three x, and we could let dv be the cosine of 20x. All right, so option one, and I wanna show you the difference so that you kind of have a strategy going forward. So u equals two plus three x, dv equals cosine of 20x. All right, now, what's going on here? Well, if you look back at the formula, do you notice that there's a du in the formula? Aha, uh -huh. 
So we've got u, but apparently we need du also. All right, well, what's du? Isn't du the derivative of u? If u is 2 plus 3x, then du is 3 dx with respect to x, right? Okay. Now, technically, they'll be really strict on this in college, probably. It's not a big deal here in high school yet, not on the AP test, but technically, you see the dv equals. Okay, the one that dv is equal to should also carry the dx with it. So if you want to put the dx with cosine of 20x, it's a good idea, all right? I'm not going to take off points if you forget it in your work because the final answer is what we're looking for. So, does anybody notice in the formula over there, there are also v's. There are two v's. How do we get v? Oh, now wait a minute. If we have dv, how do you get back to v? dv is the derivative of v. v would be the original function, so you have to integrate your derivative to get back to the original function. Hey, that's the fundamental theorem of calculus, remember? Remember we said by the... So, cosine of 20x integrated to get back to v, what's the integration of cosine? Positive sine of 20x divided by the chain rule, don't forget, divided by 20. All right? So, there's our first option right there. Somebody is u, somebody is dv, and then you take the derivative to get du, but you integrate to get v. Now, how does all this come into play? I want you to notice the most important part of that formula over there. You see this integral of v du right there? Yeah, that's the important part. We're going to have to integrate v times du to be able to pull this off. All right, that's important. So you need to look at what we just got here and say integral of, okay, v is this group, sine of 20x over 20. And then du is this group, which is times 3dx, okay? You need to look at that and ask yourself, can I integrate that? Because if I can integrate that, I'm on a good path. But if I cannot integrate that, I must have gotten my u and my dv backwards because, you know, we're also going to try the other version where u could cover the cosine and dv could cover the polynomial, all right? So now, remember, is this all multiplication and division right here? There's the times, there's the divide. When it's all multiplication and division with no addition and subtraction, aren't you allowed to pull the 3 20ths out as a coefficient, right? Can't we do that? And then simply ask yourself, can I physically integrate sine of 20x? Absolutely we can. Matter of fact, we just integrated cosine of 20x. Yes, you can integrate sine of 20x. So this is a good choice right here. This is a very good choice. Now, option two. Let's see what that could be. Option two is you could let u cover this one, the cosine, and let dv cover the 2 plus 3x. So. If u is cosine of 20x and dv is 2 plus 3x, all right? So you kind of get what we're doing here. We're assigning u to one thing, dv to another. Now, the proof is with these two over here, just like these two right here. u equals cosine, but there's a du in the formula. I'm about to show you how to use that in a second. There's a du in the formula. You must have du in the problem. The derivative of cosine of 20x is negative sine of 20x times chain rule 20. Boy, do you have to be good at doing integration one moment and derivatives the other moment, right? We're going both ways now, okay? Technically, dx. Now, technically, with the dv, that's where you should also have your dx carried along from the problem. Again, if you don't put it, it's not a huge deal for now, but if you have dv given or assigned, but we have to go find v for the formula. So how do you get from derivative of v back to v? The derivative of v is integrated to get the original v. The integration of 2 is 2x, and the integration of 3 is plus 3x squared, and the dx goes away when you integrate. Now ask yourself, the most important part of that formula over there. Integral of v du. Ask yourself, can I integrate? 
if I make this choice for u and dv? Well, v would be this term right here. <clears throat> Put that in there. And du would be this term. Oh, I don't like that minus sign because it looks like subtraction. Let's put that minus up to the front, even outside the integral. Sine of 20x. And actually, the 20 could also go outside the integral. You know what? Let's just go out here and make this negative 20. That would be way better. Okay, see how I did that? Just brought it out. Now, let's look at this and ask yourself, can I reasonably integrate this? Uh, you just got... A variable group times another variable group which is where we started except this polynomial is even worse than the one we started with isn't it so something feels like we're going the wrong direction doesn't it now what's a shortcut to having to write all this information out and figure out the good integral and the bad integral okay there are a couple of shortcuts I'm going to teach you today number one instead of writing out this whole integral right here I want to train you to look for the VDU, because remember you have to integrate VDU in the formula, whatever that means, so we haven't really specified yet, but isn't this V and DU stacked right here? Okay, so in your mind, you're going to actually just blend these two together and multiply them and think, all right, 3 20ths sine. Could I integrate a 3 20th sine? Absolutely. Then in your mind, without writing it out, you can just look at V times DU here. Do I want to integrate a harder polynomial times another sine of x? No, that's going to go right back to this thing again and be an endless loop you can't get out of, okay? So you can just scan. So what I call it is scan the second column for integrability. That is actually a word, by the way. Integrability. Can it be integrated? Or in this case, can it easily be integrated? Scan this column right here for integrability. No, not on this one, all right? So we're going with option one. Then I'll teach you another little trick in a second. So let's go back to option one and see if we can make some sense out of this stuff. Now don't forget your board of nine things that you can commonly integrate because these are the nine most common things that we will integrate in this class and there are very few outliers. So you want to conform to one of these nine things if you can and we're about to do that. Watch this. Now I've cleaned up this board over here. All right, so the beauty of editing. So, once you've made the correct choice, the easier choice for u and dv, as evidenced by the integrability of these two multiplied together, now we go to the formula. So this is basically like u substitution on a higher level. It's like u and dv substitution, right? Okay, so when you have a product rule, but in reverse, you let one thing be u, you let one thing be dv, and the integral of u dv, is uv minus integral v du. Okay, so uv, u times v, minus integral of v du. And if you're anything like me with my sloppy handwriting, I have a tendency to make my v's look a little curvy like u's sometimes. So you really have to be mindful to make very pointy v's so that they don't get mixed up with your u's, okay? Now, follow that formula right there, and it will work. So, equals. First of all, u times v. u was 2 plus 3x times v. That's this thing. Sine of 20x over 20. Believe it or not, that's actually already been integrated for you. So that, that's been integrated, all right? Minus the integral. You still have to integrate something. You've got to do some work, though, right? The integral of v times du, which is these two multiplied together, v times du. So that was the sine of 20x over 20 times 3 dx. You simply just plug it into the formula once you've made the correct choice for u and dv. So now, why does this formula work? We just proved it. Didn't we just work it backwards from the product rule? Okay, so it's going to work. And remember, Brooke Taylor, he was the one who discovered this. So here we go. Let's look at the final answer. I really, really want to put this over 20 as a 1 20th in front. It looks so much prettier there. So let's move it out there, right, like we always do. So 1 20th times that group, okay, minus, we're going to siphon out the 3 20ths like we did earlier. And I am just integrating sine 
away from getting the answer, all right? Oh yeah, we can integrate the sine of u, can't we? However, in this case, u substitution is not necessary. So this is what I keep saying in class, and I really want you to know this. Could you let u equal 20x? Sure, and you could do the whole u substitution thing. If the chain rule of the base is a constant, which the chain rule is 20, you don't have to do u substitution. Do that thing I tell you where you divide by the chain, okay? Now, if the chain rule of the base is a variable, like if that's 20x squared and the chain rule is 40x, then you have to do u substitution, okay? That's the main thing in this class. I really want you to know about u substitution versus not doing it. So we'll say equals 1 20th, 2 plus 3x quantity, that is, sine of 20x minus, okay, the 3 20 of course. Now, the integration of sine, remember, keep this straight in your head because we're kind of new to this. The derivative of sine is cosine. So the integration of sine is negative cosine. Now, there's no reason to write 3 20ths negative cosine because it looks like subtraction, but it's not. Does everybody see to change sine into negative cosine, but let the negative blend with the other negative and make a positive because it's a double negative, right? Cosine of 20x. I'm not doing u substitution, even though you could, because if you simply divide by the chain rule 20, you do not have to do u substitution, right? Sine goes to negative cosine. We, the double negative changed, and then we made sure and divided by our chain rule, and we can get away with no u substitution at all. Don't forget the plus c. And for the final answer, I would probably put, you know, all this down here, and then what else would I put? How about 20 times 20 is 400? So let's do 3 four hundredths cosine of 20x plus c, okay? And it is fascinating, not that we have time right now, but if you take the derivative of your answer, it should go back to the integrand, right? The derivative of these two is a ho de high plus hi de ho product rule. The derivative of this one is just a simple cosine goes to negative sine. You do the derivative. You get a term, the ho de high term, plus the hi de ho term, and then some kind of minus sign, and it turns out that you have two terms that are exactly opposite. It's really cool. So you have like a, a positive sign term, and then you have a negative identical sign term, and then they both cancel each other out, and you get whatever's in the middle, and it ends up being this thing right here. It's so cool how it works. So the first and the last actually cancel each other. Fascinating stuff. Okay, so now I haven't given this a name yet. So this is what we call integration by parts. Okay, we're kind of breaking this into parts here. So if you ever had to search for this, you know, look up examples on the internet, you would call this integration by parts as discovered by Brooke Taylor and fine-tuned by others as well. Okay, let's try another. If only there were some sort of mnemonic device where I could like determine from the beginning what is u going to be and what is dv going to be. There is. It's an acronym. You thought FOIL was your favorite acronym? You thought PEMDAS was your favorite acronym? It's your new favorite acronym. L-A-T-E, don't be late. All right, this is the secret right here. Now, L stands for logarithmic, okay? A stands for algebraic, all right? Algebraic would be like a polynomial, like the two plus three x. T stands for trigonometric, kind of like the cosine we just had in this last problem over here, right? And E stands for exponential, like two to the x, e to the x, e to the three x, seven to the six x. Now this is a hierarchy here. The ones that are higher on the list are preferential for u, okay? So in this last problem, what was algebraic? 2 plus 3x was algebraic, there were no logs. And then cosine was trigonometric. So cosine 20x fell here. The one that's higher is your u, 
and the one that's lower is your DV. And this rarely ever deviates. It's not gonna deviate in high school BC calculus, trust me. Probably not even in Calc 2 either, okay? So you'll let U be the higher one and DV be the lower type, and that will set it up for success for you. You won't have to go through the guessing game. Isn't that awesome? Really cool. Now, in college, and you'll find this on the internet, you'll also see Lyot. Okay, there are two reasons I don't like this. Number one, it doesn't spell a word. Lyot is not a word. It's nice to remember late, right? Number two, you will use this in college, but I stands for inverse trigonometry. All right, what's inverse trig? That would be like arc sine, arc cosine, arc tangent, all the arcs, right? Even like the arc cosecant and weird ones like that. So inverse trig, there are no problems on the AP test that have inverse trig times something else. It's always log, polynomial or algebraic, trig, and exponential. So in high school, you don't need light, you just need late, okay? You can throw that in later when you get to college. So inverse trig would go right in here. It's not that hard, you just follow the rules, okay? So late method, all right. Now we've got clues. So now let's take all the knowledge we just learned and apply it to the next problem. Can we correctly do the next one? So here's a good example right here. Integration of x times natural log of 3x. All right. If you were doing a derivative, it would be a product rule. If you're doing integration, it'll be integration by parts, the closest thing to the reverse product rule. So first thing I do is I let one of these be u and one of these be dv, right? Because the formula says the integration of u times dv according to our reverse product rule research. So if I can just pick a u and a dv, remember late, logarithmic, algebraic, right? So let's spell out late. x is clearly algebraic. Natural log of 3x is logarithmic. Oh, look at that. The higher one is your u, the lower one is your dv. So u equals natural log of 3x, and the dv is going to be the x, and the dv gets the dx also. If you go with this, it will actually work out. How about that for clever? Okay. Now, what is the integration of u dv? Well, it's uv. Mr. Wade's mortal enemy, remember all the skin cancer stories? Okay, uv rays minus the integral of v du. All right, I need a du from the u, and I need a v from the dv. Okay, if u is natural log of 3x, then the derivative of u is 1 over 3x, remember the natural log rule, remember all your rules, times the chain rule of the original base times three. The threes cross cancel, and you get one over x is your du. And even better, one over x dx is even more appropriate, okay? dv equals x. What is the original v? Add one to the power, x squared, over the new power, two. No need to put a plus c in here. By the way, we'll just put a plus C in the very end. You don't have to build it in yet. Okay, technically it's plus C, right? There you go. And by the way, if you want to check this column for integrability, do you think you can integrate V times DU? Do you think you can integrate X squared over two times one over X? I see the X's cross canceling. I think it's going to be like a really easy integration actually. I feel good about this. You'll notice if it's not, okay? And if you don't see it here, when you put it in the formula, you'll notice that it is not a good integration. So, we get the, let's see, what do we get? Well, you don't have to write this down every time, it's implied. The integration is going to be equal to u, natural log 3x, times v, x squared over two, minus the integral of v, x squared over two, times du, which is one over x dx. And if you can now integrate this thing after simplifying, and this has already been through the integration process, you will have the only type of function in the world whose derivative goes back to this. 
So let's see, ooh, I really like that one half out in front instead of over here, right? By the way, I also like the x squared up front of the natural log. Doesn't that just look better, right? So one half x squared, natural log of three x, minus the integral of, oh, look at this right here. Cancel out one x from that and one x from that. All you are doing is integrating x times one half. Matter of fact, let's move the one half out and then x dx, okay? And you're asking yourself, can I integrate x? Heck yeah, I can. It's one of the easiest things we've ever integrated, right? So minus one half x squared, add one to the power, divide by the new power. By the way, this is common. It's not always, but it's very common. If you feel like you've integrated this before from dv to v, often you end up integrating the same type of thing here, probably with a coefficient, but that, that's common to do the same thing kind of again there, okay? Um, this is, well, I'm just gonna write same to save us some time because I need to simplify, and don't forget your plus c, okay? So basically you just, if you know the integration of x, you can actually get this problem right and as long as you follow the formula. It's just a formula, right? It's so easy. Students love this because they find it very easy. So in conclusion, the final answer is one half x squared natural log of 3x from here minus, let's call that 1 fourth x squared plus c. And if you did a product rule of this and then you did a normal derivative of this, you would get like two opposite terms that canceled each other out and then one surviving term that would be exactly the integrand in the beginning. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. Integration by parts, my friends. So for letter C, we've got the integration of natural log of x over square root of x. And we get to test out our skills. We'll write down late, first of all. All right, little twist in this one. So natural log of x clearly falls under the logarithmic category. Now, you've got square root of x. It's not trigonometric. It's not exponential. It is still algebraic. It's not considered a polynomial because it has a fractional power, right? So anything with a fractional power is not really a polynomial, but algebraic, you're kind of getting the hint today that algebraic is x to any power with any coefficient, right? So just the basic stuff. Now, here is the issue. If you make a x to the 1 half, you are wrong and you will get the wrong answer. I want to point out something really important in the formula. Isn't the formula, well, let's go over here, let's go to the correct place. Isn't the formula u times dv, so you have to find the multiplication of two pieces to be able to pull this off correctly? Not division, multiplication. So you have to see this as natural log of x times x to the negative one half. You can't phrase it as a division problem. Everybody see that? So you would bring this up to the top, you force it to become a product rule of sorts, and the closest thing we have to the reverse product rule, right? So it doesn't work as division. So if you make a the square root of x, it's wrong. If you make a x to the negative one half, it's correct. So everybody make sure you make it into a multiplication problem, not division, okay? And then you're good. That was the twist. So the upper one is always your u, and the lower one is always your dv. And I'll throw a dx into the dv one just to be professional and proper. So once you've assigned u, which is natural log of x, then you go get the derivative of u. So du feels like I have a whole lot more headroom than I normally have. Did this tripod like move backwards and tilt upward or something? This is usually, usually I don't have this much headroom. So du, the derivative of natural log of x is one over x times the chain rule of x, which is one, dx. All right, so that's my du term. Uh, does it have to appear in the problem? No, it's not like traditional u substitution. You just take all these things and just cram them into the formula and it works, right? Okay, dv is x to the negative one half, but I have to go back and get v. So v is the integration 
of x to the negative 1 half, which would be x to the add 1 to the power, positive 1 half, over the new power, positive 1 half. But what's divide by 1 half? Let's see if all of us BC students out there can just do this in our head now. Divide by 1 half, isn't that also multiply by the reciprocal, which is 2? And a good BC student will just do that instantly. 2x to the 1 half. Okay, this is not something that's taught in AB class at all. This is way beyond AB. All right, so there you go. There are your four pieces, and then you just take all these. Oh, check this column for integrability, right? V, v times du is just going to be like an x times another x, which can combine, and so it's going to be a very easy thing to integrate. So we're good. Okay, as long as you use the late method, you'll be all right. So the integration of this, that integral was so small it looked like an S, the integral of this is going to be uv minus the integral of v du. You'll all get so good at this that you don't even write this anymore, you just kind of think it in your head. So u times v, all right, u, natural log of x, times v, 2x to the 1 half, minus the integral of v, 2x to the 1 half, times du, 1 over x dx. All right, now get ready for your algebra skills. So this has been integrated for you by the formula. This one still needs to be integrated. You can't integrate it in its current form, but is that over 1? Is that x to the 1 half up top, and is that x on the bottom? Okay, use your skills x to the 1 half over x should be combined, cross canceled sort of, but actually probably easier to just subtract powers. If you have the same base, don't you subtract powers? And this is x to the first. So this is what I do. This is the way I teach it. They're both base x. They may be combined. Division means subtraction. I take the bigger exponent minus the smaller exponent but then I make sure I place it in the correct place, either top or bottom. So if I were you, I would do one minus a half is one half, correct? But, so it's x to the one half, but where? For once, this, is, this, is, this has not happened. This has been kind of rare in calculus. For the first time, maybe all year long, the stronger x is in the denominator, not the numerator, and that occasionally happens. So it's x to the 1 half placed in the denominator because you always go to the stronger one. So it's x to the 1 half downstairs, 2 upstairs, dx at the end. Okay? Make sure you understand those algebra skills right there. And then blah, blah, blah. So division is subtraction, but you move it to the stronger place. Okay? And then you're, you're faced with integrating 2 over x to the 1 half. All right? So, blah, blah, blah. Make sure this isn't cut off. Well, I got so much headroom up here, this probably is cut off. So I gotta make sure and move. Now I'm zooming. Oh my goodness gracious, this is a total disaster. I should just cut this and put it in the bloopers and the outtakes at the end. That, that's where it should have been. Okay, anyway, blah, blah, blah. We'll get back to that. Minus integral of 2x to the negative 1 half dx. Move it up. Oh, look. Remember I said this earlier? If you integrated dv to v, which was x to the negative 1 half, and you feel like you're kind of doing it again, but with a coefficient that's different, that's common. It's not always, but it's very common. So if you feel like deja vu, well, that should happen. That's actually supposed to happen in most integration by parts questions. Okay, what's the integration of this? I'm completely out of board space. For the first time in my YouTube lessons, I have covered both boards completely. And I'm just going to have to use the magic of television. Let me go over here. All right. And voila. So now we finish off the problem. Natural log of x, 2x to the 1 half, minus the integration of 2, well, the coefficient stays, add 1 to the power. So x to the negative 1 half gets promoted to x to the positive 1 half over the new power, so divide by 1 half, we just did this earlier, divide by 1 half, but then in your head, can everybody just flip it around, keep change flip? 
and multiply by two over one instead, right? Don't forget to put a plus C after all that work, okay? So the final, probably the best way to write the final answer, two should be moved up to the front as a coefficient. Then probably put square root of X, put it back to radical form, then probably put natural log last in that group because it's supposed to come last if it's a log. Last log, hey. Minus four square root of X plus C. If any of you clever cats are thinking, hey, could I just factor out like a two square root of X from those two? Yeah, just leave the plus C outside of that. You could, there's no reason to. So there you go. And the derivative of that circle is the original integrand. Beautiful. Hopefully integration by parts makes sense. It's not bad. BC students actually love it. They think it's pretty easy. So go try some now. Let's see, what was that 4-5? So there is no homework. So go try some of the parts questions that are on your sample test and you can practice your skills, all right? That's your goal. I'll see you next time for 4-6. Hold it now. See, I'm trying to practice my Santa laugh because I'm gonna be uh, uh, Santa Claus. With that. You wanna give your math teacher a heart attack? Calculus teacher, you idiot. How do you know, first of all, to, to use our new, I think I just changed certs. Certs? I changed certs. Certs! Not quite as, 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 as. Trigonometric. <sighs> Writing and talking at the same time.